watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On today's show, Nigeria's Transport Minister shares his policy direction for the ministry. You can join today's conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market. You can also send your thoughts and your comments to my Twitter handle too. It's at Esther O. Awuni. Now, Nigeria's real modernization program is getting some traction as the government is aiming to link all seaports in the country by rail. Nigeria's Minister of Transportation, Rotumi Amechi, joins me today to share some insight into what to expect from Nigeria's Transport Ministry this year. Thank you, Minister. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. You're welcome. I think a good place to start would be for you to bring us up to speed on ongoing key projects. I, understand, I know you're in Lagos to inspect some projects. And just listening to some of the comments you've made so far, you did say you're not too... Uh, work done could have been better in terms of you know, the progress being made so far, but I'll, I'll allow you to uh, elaborate further on that. I thought you would also go back that to say that some few days ago I said they've improved. Uh, they, they Tell had, us. They had slowed down. Uh, that I became a bit worried about uh, completion date. They had like given us completion date of April. Okay. Uh, and uh, they were no longer sure that this is for the Lagos Ibadan Rail project. Yes, yeah. they were no longer sure of the April date. Uh, and the reason is uh, that all the items that they needed to complete the project are still at the seaport. Oh. So for that reason, so what we've done is that we've uh, had to fast track the berthing of the vessels, which was a bit difficult, much more clearing the items from the seaports. Now that we've done, and I think that they've, they've started roofing now at um, the Putemeta station, uh, which was a major problem. Well, that's a mega station. Uh, we've also uh, seen remarkable improvement in terms of uh, the construction from Agege to a Butemeta. Hopefully, by the time we come in February, on February 20th to inspect, we should see some of the minor stations being completed. The minor stations are about uh, six. Uh, they are in uh, they are in uh, Agege, uh, Abadu, Kajuala, uh, Papalanto. Then you have Oludu and you have Omo Omiadu. These six stations, we expect that they should be completed in February. We expect that, even though they had given us a, clue, a target date of April, okay. but we're insisting that it must complete in February so that we can see the major stations and the mega station completed in April. That's what we expect. I hope that uh, they will keep to it. The tracks uh, will have a problem from a butter meter to the seaport. Pipes, roads, building, we're building uh, flyovers and all that. We're dealing with water, swampy land. We have to avoid a lot of pipes going to the seaport okay. and all that. So, uh, hopefully, we, we believe that all that can be sorted, sorted out between now and the end of the second quarter. Well, when would you, when would you like this to be commissioned? When, I mean, I'm not the president. First, okay. the president has to take, we have uh -huh. to give us a date that he's available. Okay. That's one. Okay, perhaps to, let me rephrase that, to be ready for the president to come. <laughs> Commission. No, I could be a politician. I could commission tomorrow. Okay. Because the tracks have gotten to, okay. to Lagos. The tracks are in Lagos. Some person will commission without waiting for the completion of the, of the stations. But let's wait and see when... Uh, all you know is that within, within the first and second quarter, we should be ready for commissioning. How much is this project? How much is the cost? $2 billion. Dollars. That's about 720 billion naira. Okay, so for was this one, allocated... For 156 kilometers of, of railway. No, most of the money is borrowed. Okay, you know, usually many times when we talk about, uh, you know, many of these key projects, there's always a talk about in terms of how it will be repaid, if the project itself can repay uh, itself. Have you, so ever, seen, have you ever seen anywhere in the world where the railway repays itself? It's impossible. It's impossible because it serves other parts of the economy. Okay. Railways are built for economic growth. It stimulates the economy. Okay. So now you will see manufacturing growing high because they have logistics sorted out for them. You will see the road lasting longer because they have moved cargoes from the road to the to the railways and okay. all that. So usually it's the government that has to pay for the for the cost of the railway. We will contribute to that because when we when we start carrying cargoes, we will charge the cargo. Okay. Let's talk about um, the transportation roadmap. Uh, I mean, I know that. Uh, it would appear that the recent investments have been guided by the uh, Nigeria Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan. And I know that under the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, I mean, the document runs its course this year. I know that transportation had 
somewhat of a portfolio in there in terms of, uh, and I know some adjustments were made to one or two policies in terms of funding, uh, innovative ways of financing, public-private partnerships, and how some of these projects also, again, could repay uh, themselves. Could you just help us elaborate what the roadmap is and if it's still, if it is under the Nigeria Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan? The problem with uh, what we do is, 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 is it's capital intensive and the funds are just not there. Currently, we borrowed about uh, $1.6 billion, no, $1.4 billion to, to commence and complete work on the Lagos Ibadan. Okay. Uh, we are borrowing $5.3 billion to, com to complete the work from Ibadan to Kano, out of which we are paying a billion dollars. So actually, what we will borrow will be about $4.3 billion. Uh, what is that concessionary rates? For the Baron to Kano, no. The Baron to Mina, it's commercial. Okay. Kano to Kaduna, concessionary rate. Uh, but for Lagos, the Baron is concessionary. For Kaduna, Abuja is concessionary. We're also going to borrow for Potako to Meduguri. We'll work at that once we can meet with the president in the next one week. Uh, we, on our own funds, we completed. we have completed work on the it's a bit to worry. Okay. We bought coaches and locomotives that have just arrived at the seaport. We we're waiting for it to birth and then to clear. We believe that by the time we come in February, we should be able to use, believe, I don't want to come tomorrow and decide and then you hold me uh, responsible for that statement. But we believe that by February 20th, we should be able to use our DMUs, which would have been cleared from the seaport. So we're having 20 locomotives and coaches. That's 16 locomotives. And it's 16 coaches and okay. four locomotives by February 20th. And we'll be transporting it to, to we'll be transporting 10, which is two locomotives and four and six coaches to, no, f two locomotives and eight coaches to, to Kano Kaduna, no, Kano, uh, Kaduna Abuja. Okay. So that will improve the transportation or the pressure in Kaduna Abuja. Currently, Kaduna Abuja is taking 300 passengers, we should take 300 passengers per day, but we're doing 3,700 passengers per day with the same number of locomotives and coaches. Now, what will happen when this comes is that we'll take out nearly 1,000, 1,000 plus, okay. who, will be, who will be seated, transporting, because it will be nearly, we have 720, not nearly, not 1,000, because it will, it will be or 800 passengers, because we'll be doing, we'll be doing 80 passengers per coach and there are about eight coaches and two locomotives. But what's important is that they will have choices of okay. time at what time they want to go. And we can actually convey about 3,700 passengers per day when we increase the number of times that each of these, each of these locomotives will run. We would have, we will commence uh, uh, commercial, I don't think we'll commence commercial activities on the Lagos Ibadan, but we'll continue the test run. And it's expected that uh, the design speed is 150 kilometers per hour, and the operation speed is about 120 kilometers per hour. So you should be able to get to Lagos, I tell you, one hour, 30 minutes. That's our expectation. So that's what it is currently. Now, what, is, what policy are we driving at? We're trying to see whether we can complete, commence work on about three seaports. Okay. One at Wari, one at uh, Bonny, and then the Bon Seaport, which is uh, sponsored and supported by the Acquire Bon State Government. Uh, work has already commenced in uh, Lekki. I will be inspecting Lekki on the 19th. Now, I know that this is all part of a, a broad master plan. Yes. And for those, yeah, you mentioned a couple of roads, the popular ones, you know, the Kaduna, Abuja, Lagos, Ibadan. I'm just wondering, I'm just looking at the entire map of the country in terms of the real network I'm that we're to, I'm aspiring to, I'm coming to, to achieve. I'm okay. coming to constructions. After that, we'll talk about our dreams, if, if, if we can. Because what I call it dreams because, yes, we have the ambition, but about the money? Resources are essential to determine whether we're progressing or not. So, like I said, in the terms of the seaports, those are the three seaports that we expect to, be, to commence construction this year. I hope so. Uh, in terms of rail, what is critical for us, there will be two critical rail lines that we we'll have to look for money for. We we'll have to look for money for Lagos Calabar and Portacot to Medjugorje. They are essential. If we do get the money, we'll commence construction. The only thing you can get is Eastern Line. 
Southern Line. Southern Line is the Lagos to Calabar. Eastern Line is from Akko to Medjugorje. Western Line is Lagos to Calabar and the Central Line. The Central Line is from Abuja to Wari. Once you can complete them, if you can run the whole Nigeria, just uh, to solve the political question of oh, there are no, there's no rail to my country, my part of the country, then you can begin to add the other areas that you've left out. But in terms of economic growth, you need a central line that starts from Abuja and terminates at Wari Seaport. You need the eastern line that starts from Portacot and terminates at uh, Bruno, going through Yobe. You need the western line that starts from okay. Lagos to Kano, right? And you need the southern line that starts from Lagos to Calabar, and the whole Nigeria is nearly okay, covered. If I could comment here, you mentioned that you know you're still looking for the money for you know for some these ones for some of these projects, and obviously the conversation around private investments into the real sector. Uh, is, is a key one and it's, it's currently ongoing. And I remember sometime last year, I think that was June, you did host the, I think it was the ambassador of Italy to Nigeria, and he did express some you know, interest in Nigeria's transportation sector. Could you talk to us about that? What was Most the of them are interested, but the funds are not easy to come by. If they are, they, we're ready for them. We're ready for anybody who wants to come and What are the barriers? It's availability of funds. They're not cheap. So money. when they say they're, they're you can, you can do the, okay, just imagine. Uh, Lagos, no, Kaduna Abuja Road is 250 billion naira road. Uh, Kaduna, no, Kaduna Kano Road is 150 billion naira, right? Kaduna Kano Rail is about nearly two billion dollars, but not about two billion. But let's assume it's two billion dollars. That's 720 billion naira. Is, you know, it, is, it, is it different? I know. You know, under the uh, Nigeria Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan, I know there's a funding, uh, funding structure, funding uh, roadmap, if you, for lack of a better word. What and I know that public-private partnerships was, was part yeah, for, of it. For roads. Value capture. For roads. For, for, for roads. Not f this no, none of them can. None but of when you say infrastructure, I mean transportation yeah, infrastructure. They, 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 you, can, you can do that at the seaport. They can do that on roads, but they can't do that on... How many of that can raise that kind of money? If you're just joining us, Nigeria's Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, is our guest today on Beyond Markets, and we've been exploring the road ahead for the ministry, the transport ministry, this year. Thank you, Minister, for your time so far. Okay. Let's pick up from where we left off, talking about funding. Obviously, it's, it's, it's key here. But I'm just wondering, right now, what is the plan? For this year, first of all, the transport ministry has somewhere above 820 billion now to, you know, for capital, for projects. But I'm just wondering, for the broader plan for the country, you've taken some loans, some at concessionary rates, but overall, a bird's eye view, what is the broader plan for funding? You just, if you say you're looking for money, you just what are the options that are available you to you? You just can't plan now because there's no money anywhere. The only place you can get money is in China. But I think they also, they have loan fatigue. Because they are lending to literally everybody, lending to most countries in Africa. They've lent us um, nearly $2 billion, 1.4 1. 1. plus 500, that's 1.9. Surely it can't be just China, because I, let me... Where should I country, please tell me? Let, like me, let, me, let me say this. Many times I have, um, have experts come here, analysts come here, some of them foreign, and I, even some ambassadors, and I ask them, and they, they keep telling me, look, Nigeria has all this infrastructure challenges, but in them are opportunities. They talk about the road shows, I mean, the, the Nigeria-UK Africa summits, I think you attended that too, and it, those discussions are usually had in terms of, yes, there are opportunities, yes, there's a funding gap, but it's also an opportunity. So I'm just trying to reconcile all of that, that when just, you now say that, that only just, China is showing is interest at this no, point. No, the people are showing, showing interest, but by the time you so tell them, okay. I don't, there's a country I won't call it. <laughs> Very rich country, by any standard. Walked up to me, stopped dealing with, uh, we, can, we can assist you with railways and all that, and I agreed. And they say, how much are you looking at? I say, $20 billion. I've not seen them till today. That's the end of that conversation. What about uh, development finance institutions, I went, I went the EFDB, I, I, the I, I, I IMC, that, EFC? I, I, went to ask, I went as far as India to ask for $4 billion to start the Lagos Calabar. To today, there's no reply. But then the Indians were coming, we were ready to assist you for your railways. So I went. I said, look, can we, out of the 11.1 billion dollars, can, can you lend us 10, eh, 4? Let us start. I've not gotten a reply in writing. I didn't say I just visited. Uh, which other country? 
there's a, there's a job we're about to do, the, the contract of the of uh, Kano, Kano to Marabi. We're waiting from Europe. Up to now, there's no, not in the loan facility. So isn't this, a, this, isn't this now then going to be a big challenge for our future plans? Well, that's what I mean. Because that's we a, have to spend over 30 billion US dollars every year for the next 10 years if we're to close our infrastructure gap. That's a, that's we're having these problems at this stage. I mean, it sounds very disturbing, if I, if for, for <laughs> lack of a better <laughs> that's word. That's why I say dreams. we're stuck, because that's what, that's that, it. That, that's why I say dreams. These are our dreams. You see, as much as possible, you would know that not not all the countries, a lot of countries are struggling in terms of the economy. So they will lend you money when they are struggling to, to even survive. Just name the country. Just name the country. The only country that has been giving us funds for now is the Chinese government. And then, so they've given you uh, 1.9 for, for Lagos, Ibadan, and uh, Abuja Kano. Abuja Kano, Abuja Kaduna rather. Abuja Kaduna, is, they gave you $500 million. Okay. They gave you $1.4 billion for Lagos, Ibadan. We are, con we are contributing $600 million. So when they bring 1.4, you contribute $600 million. That is nearly uh, uh, how many billion naira for, for $600 million. So you really have a big problem in terms of uh, funding. Then you have, you have $11.1 billion for Lagos to Calabar. Where will you get the money from? If you go to all the cities on the on the Portacourt Medugri, they talk about fourteen billion dollars. If you must, if you go political, see we must uh, we must touch all the state capitals. So you're looking at Oweri, you're looking at uh, Omaha, you're looking at Enugu, you're looking at Abakleki, you're looking at uh, uh, Abakleki is uh, Oka as a number five. Then you move to uh, Makode, Lafia, right? You move to Bauchi, you move to Gombe, capital of Gombe. Then you talk about uh, Damaturu and then Medjugorje on that line. You're looking at close to $14 billion. Uh, oh. Then you have to do a seaport in Bonnie and all that. It's quite expensive. I'm ju I just imagine that, I mean, obviously it would be difficult to even plan any further if we're still at you know, stock at the stage of funding. But let's quickly move, let's move this along. For this this year, at least, for the transport ministry, you have uh, just over 120 billion to, you know, for capital projects. Help us, talk to us about what, what, what you're prioritizing. Out of, out of 120 billion, 78 billion is meant for railways. So that's not even enough because you need a billion dollar to be able to start a Baron Tokano. And a billion dollar is a 360 billion naira. And you're giving 120 out of which 78 is for railway. How concerned are you? Because when you say this, and, and we, in the context of the Africa continental free trade area that is you know, taking off, obviously it's those countries that have a good rail network. And we're not just talking about within the country now, regional. You're able to, you know, you're able to begin to see that inter interconnectivity between countries. Uh, not just between some, but as government, the first option open to me is mm. how to construct those rail lines around, around the country. Because you need to move investments, you need to move cargoes, you need to move production. When you finish that, then there's one we're doing from Kano to Maradi. Maradi is in Niger Republic. Because we need to carry cargo up to Niger. Right? Then there are those suggesting uh, from Lagos to Benin Republic. But the rest will be by the other countries. But currently, currently, our focus is how to construct railway in the country. I don't think we're doing badly. I've told you here that we've, we've completed it, I'm to worry. Lagos Ibadan should be completed in the next two, three, four months. But obviously, the bigger problem, as you know, as we've highlighted, is you know where more where additional funding is going to come from going forward. We, but we, I know we that hope, you're thinking. We hope you're, to get we hope to get money for Potakot Medugri. That I can assure. I don't know about I don't know about what, Lagos. From China. Travel. Yeah, from China. But I think the Russians want to fund Potakot Potakot Calabar. So if we get money for Botakot Meduguri and we get money for Porta Lagos Calabar, then we're almost there. The only outstanding one will be, will be uh, Abuja to worry. So what's a typical, let's, you know, a typical 
uh, deal with, with China? What does it usually look like in terms of what China puts on the table yeah. and what we the, put on the table the, and then rates? I, I just want to, you know, All the stories you hear from the public, you just wonder where they get the information from. Well, thankfully I mean, you're here. So just paint the picture. <laughs> you give get, us a typical you hear, scenario. You hear people saying, oh, they will take over your seaport. That's if you don't pay. We, we pay, we pay back as a twin due. Uh, and we have been paying back. We, so no, we're not, we're not up to the point. We're not yet. Uh, okay, we're not. We're not when it gets to that point, Nigeria will pay back. <coughs> we have the concessionary rate is usually about three percent. Okay, that's the rate. Uh, commercial rate will likely be three percent plus LIBOR. So it depends on what LIBOR is at any particular point in time that you're paying. That's all. And you put a guarantee. That's all. So for the next, for the foreseeable future now, for the projects that obviously were not, that are not covered by the funds for the ministries that ministries uh, are allocated this year, it's all China at the moment. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, like you said, the, the Russians. So, but then what, you, what happens at the point where, because I'm just thinking, there's only so much China too can put on the table. Exactly. China is looking at other regions, perhaps exactly. other countries, even within Africa. Exactly. And we know, exactly. we know some of those exactly. names. So, so what, what happens then when we get to that point? At that point, we'll, we'll have to stop. Because if I see a economy, we can't economy. stop. We have a grant. We, we have no, no problem. <laughs> we, 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 won't we have stop. to fund infrastructure We won't stop once you can pay your tax. But how much will your tax be? That's another conversation. And let's quickly have that also. Because the, the, the conversation around many of these projects, uh, some of the loans that we take are you know, hopefully good enough tied to specific projects. But those projects, for instance, roads, have to pay for themselves. Tolling can, can, yeah, can, well, can the, solve the, that the issue. The government is looking at tolling. Come and look at tolling. Okay. Because you have to maintain the roads too. But you can't toll the railway. <laughs> you can't. The rail services is a social service. And but what it does, as much as it's a social service, it grows the economy. It creates employment. Currently, when we are doing the Lagos we had over ten to eleven thousand workers on site. That's employment for ten to eleven. Are there workers. similar countries, countries with maybe a similar situation as ours that you've looked to and perhaps perhaps they've been able to succeed? They were in that same issue, financial issue, and were able to find a way out. Are we? Have we looked at those countries to see what not, we can take a leaf just, from from them? Not just that we are looking at the countries. Mm. Is, this, is there any country like that? Now, for now, the situation is bad glo globally. That you really to get to get when I, I was a gentleman I was just speaking to I was speaking with now out there. We said, oh, the money is just out there. I mean, I mean that's told, what we hear all the time. Where is the money? Okay, bring it. Now. We, keep, we keep telling I, us that I, there's so much credit out there. I told them I said, we, bring I mean, it. I go to all these economic summits, you know, not just here, outside of the country, and that's what those are the conversations we hear. Me, panels, let, 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 and they keep talking about Nigeria, transportation sector. Just go that there's a huge gap, opportunities for investors, for everybody, and I'm, I don't know. I'm just trying to reconcile let, all of that. Let me give an example. A Chinese firm came forward and said, look, we can get the money. Give us the contract. We we'll proceed with the contract, nothing to worry about. Give us guarantee. So we said, contract awarded. Abuja to Abuja to Itabe with a seaport in Wari. Awarded. Guarantee we're ready to give you, but don't forget to also agree that you give us a guarantee that you pay back after the number of years. If today they've not been able to come back to us with any, any but it's been approved, it's been awarded to them. But today, six months after, we've not commenced construction. I thought they told us money was out there. Hmm. Okay, so we have about two, uh, less than two minutes left. Just, just, just you know, bring this uh, back uh, to full circle. The projects that we're expecting at the, by the end of 2020 would have been fully completed. What, what can we look forward to? We should complete the seaports will be completed. It will take about two years to complete the seaports. No seaports, okay. So railway would have completed Lagos to Ibadan. Okay. That's it should be, before June, July. We should, we should be. Uh, we should use it, we should commence commercial activities. We, it happened to worry, 350 kilometers of rail should have been completed. Okay. We have commenced work on the uh, Ibadan Tokano. That's it. Okay, Minister, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for talking to us today. We appreciate your time on You're the show. Welcome. That was Nigeria's Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, of course, giving us an outlook for what to expect and, of course, uh, uh, an update on ongoing key projects across the country. That's our show for today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Remember, you can watch the show at 5 p.m. West African time daily and have access to all previous episodes of the show on our website at cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets. And of course, you can follow my Twitter handle too. It's at Esther O. Awuni. For myself and the team, it's bye for now.